Hi, my name is Michael Wimmer. I'm from the Technical University of Delft and I will introduce you today's topic, which is experimental progress and candidate materials for topologic insulators. Now, you already have learned about mathematical models and invariants for topological insulators. And what we will do today is we'll fill this with life, we'll fill this with real materials. And in fact, what you've already learned, uh, the mathematical model, the so-called bernevik yusheng model, or short BHZ model, that model actually uh, leads us directly to candidate materials. And I will show you now how this works. So let's first recapitulate the BHZ model. In the BHZ model, you have four ingredients, them being you have a band of electrons with a positive mass, you have a band of holes with a negative mass. In order to be in a topological regime, you have to be, have the band order inverted. That is, the band of the holes has to be above the band bottom of the electrons. And as a fourth ingredient, you have to have a coupling between electrons and holes that is linear in the momentum. Okay, so these are the four ingredients. Depending on the strength of this coupling, uh, this coupling then gives you a band structure as shown in black here, which can either have the minimum at k equals to zero or two minima at finite momentum. So you've seen something similar already in the Kitaev model and in the P-wave superconductor. So you will see that these type of band structures come up very often in this course. Now, uh, we, see we have now these four ingredients for the BHZ model. It turns out that nature actually gives us in a very common material three ingredients for free namely in normal semiconductors. Those have electrons, those have holes, and they have a k-linear coupling between them because the electrons, they come from s-like orbitals and the holes come from p-like orbitals. Now, what's missing usually in semiconductors is uh, the band inversion because usually you have the electrons uh, on top, then you have a band gap, and then you have the holes uh, for lower energies. So that, that's a trivial band structure. But it turns out that there's one semiconductor in nature, namely a mercury telluride, that's an alloy of mercury and tellurium, that has this uh, band inversion quite naturally. So this, in principle, is a natural candidate material for a topologic insulator. Now it turns out that there are some complications because this uh, mercury telluride has some other bands which spoil the gap. Uh, so one way to get rid of these additional bands is instead of having just mercury telluride, you actually make a stack a heterostructure structure out of cadmium telluride, mercury telluride, and cadmium telluride again. And with this confinement, you get rid of all unwanted bands, and you're just left with the electrons and holes, which form uh, the topological band structure. Now, is this the only material in semiconductors that we can have? Well, it would seem so, because that's the only one that has this band order naturally. But you know, there's nothing that tells us that these electrons and holes have to be in the same material. And there is another candidate material for topologic insulators that uh, we can build as follows. We can take a layer of indium arsenide and a layer of gallium antimonide, and the band offsets of these materials are just such that the electrons in indium arsenide are below the holes in the gallium antimonide. So that also gives us an inverted band structure. Now, in this case, the tunneling between these two layers uh, is uh, giving us this k linear coupling. Because it goes between layers, it's usually less uh, strong than the mercury telluride, and the band structure will usually look like this here, uh, as I draw it here. Now, this is the original uh, material that Bernevik, Yu, and Shang were predicting to be topological insulators, and that subsequently was uh, observed experimentally in Würzburg. This material is newer, it was also predicted by the group of Professor Shang, and there's not many labs in, in the world that are trying to make this material as a topologic insulator. So now we know about materials for two-dimensional topological insulators. Now, suppose you have such a material, you also have to measure it, you have to show that it's a two-dimensional topologic insulator. So what would be the possibilities? Now, you already know that two-dimensional topological insulators have edge states, which have the special property that these edge states, they cannot scatter into each other. They're protected by time reversal symmetry. And we can now probe these edge states by passing a current through them. So if you apply a voltage here to these two sides of the sample, then a current will flow through these edge states, and this will give rise to a characteristic value of the resistance. However, you do not need to restrict yourself to such a two-terminal setup. You can also go more crazy. 
Now, you've already seen in the quantum Hall effect that you can measure so-called non-local resistances in a multi-terminal setup. In the quantum Hall effect, this was the Hall resistance. Now, in this case, there is no Hall resistance because we have time reversal symmetry. But still, you can measure non-local resistances by, for example, passing a current through these terminals here and measuring a voltage here. And since you have these reflections edge channels connecting all these different leads, you will measure characteristic universals values of the non-local resistance. Now, a second way to probe the edge channels in a two-dimensional topological insulator is to try to destroy this topological insulator phase, to try to make these edge channels reflect. Now, spin orbit, for example, that we already know that doesn't do the trick because uh, spin orbit that, uh, does not break time reversal symmetry. And since these are protected by time reversal symmetry, there is no backscattering. So what we really need to do is we need to break time reversal symmetry. The easiest way to do that is with a magnetic field. And in fact, you can already think that something has to happen in a magnetic field, because consider the case of a very strong magnetic field. Eventually, we have to go into the quantum Hall regime. And in the quantum Hall regime, we'll only have edge channels going in one direction. So you have to kill one of these edge states. So this is something, this is will happen in the magnetic field. Now, I sketched to you two ways to probe the topological uh, regime. Now let's take a more detailed look.